What's up everybody? My name is Sean Taylor from the Made Up Theater and I'm here with another episode of Mutt Tips where I'm going to provide some insight into an improvisational concept and uh, if, once again, if you like the video, feel free to give it a like below. Comment with maybe a question that you have that you would like addressed in a future video. But other than that, let's jump straight into it with our concept for today. How to start an improvised scene. So there's a bunch of different ways to actually approach starting this scene. Um, I talked about it in my first video on choices and ultimately it comes down to just making a choice to get it going. But there's also various approaches to actually getting started with the scene and various ways to actually um, start on the right track where you don't feel like you plateau within the first few seconds. So let's get started with the first thing that every scene usually starts with and that is a suggestion. So improvisers in shows and in classes will generally utilize suggestions as a way to, first of all, form a connection with the audience and actually interact with them and, you know, kind of eliminate that fourth wall a little bit. And the show truly does revolve around what the audience is giving us. And it also is a way to, you know, really convince them that what we're doing is improvised. We're not pre-planning stuff because we're getting input from the audience that's going to inspire our scenes. Uh, but sometimes we might be a little bit too locked in on the suggestion and we feel a little bit trapped with it. And uh, we sometimes will become slaves to the suggestion. So for example, if the suggestion's pineapple, you know, improvisers may go up on stage and immediately start using a pineapple, like dicing one up or putting one into a smoothie and constantly saying pineapple, 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 pineapple. And uh, even though this is showing that we're definitely using the suggestion, it can be a little bit of overkill and we don't need to go that far. If anything, the suggestion is inspiration. It can lead to something else. We can use it as a bridge to another realm. So for example, pineapple might make me think of Hawaii. So I can start my scene in a bar in Hawaii and not even say the word pineapple. The audience will see the connection. They will see the bridge that we use to get to that location. And you can do that as well. Just word associate, go somewhere else and see where it leads because otherwise, we're gonna always just do the same scenes. And we don't wanna do that, it can get tiring and uh, it can stunt our creativity. So again, the suggestion is inspiration. Let it go wherever you see it go. So now that you have a suggestion and you can utilize it any way you want, let's zero in on just starting a scene. And there's a, many, many different ways to actually start a scene. And I'm gonna zero in on one that I think is actually really helpful. And that is start doing an activity. So object work is really important. It's sometimes something that improvisers can neglect to utilize in their scenes because they get focused more so on the words that they're saying um, and they improvise just through language as opposed to through actions and through object work. And my thing that I like with improv scenes is that you're creating a make-believe land on stage and the audience can see it based on how you're utilizing the environment before you. So starting a scene, we sometimes place a lot of emphasis on words. So rather than doing that, let's keep it simple and just go up on stage and start by doing an activity. And you can even do it in silence. And at that point, a partner might join you and also do the activity with you. And that's super important. If you're a second person entering a scene, rather than jumping to conflict, you know, compliment the action. So for example, if I'm on stage doing dishes, it's a lot easier if someone comes up on stage and does dishes with me, uh, as opposed to maybe someone coming in and yelling at me that I'm not doing dishes fast enough. And we immediately start in conflict, as opposed to yes, anding each other and allowing conflict to possibly be earned later. We don't wanna start in conflict generally. It can work, but it's a little harder. As opposed to that, earn it, earn it along the way. So again, just start on stage with a simple activity. The second person can come in and just mirror your character and just, you know, interact in silence, maybe give each other eye contact and show emotion as you're doing it. Maybe you're getting flirty as you're doing dishes and it leads to, you know, a nice starting off point with your dialogue and then boom, you have a great starting off point. That's easy and it's done through action as opposed to through words. So another thing with improv scenes is sometimes they can start in just a way that it just progresses very slowly and we don't have a lot of information right off the bat and it can make it difficult to actually get to an important moment. So I say uh, to counter that, simply start in the middle. So by starting in the middle of an action as opposed to right at the very beginning, we can get to different places quicker. Um, by st starting on stage with just two people maybe shaking hands and saying, oh hi, my name's blank and my name's blank. Oh, how are you? How are you doing today? 
That's something that replicates reality, but it's something that we, we do so often as people that it doesn't really intrigue us. It doesn't suck us into the scene. Um, but starting in the middle is a really cool way to immediately get the attention of the audience. It doesn't have to be like a really like action-packed moment, but just starting in the middle of some activity. So for example, if uh, you're going rock climbing in a scene, rather than starting at the base of the mountain, you know, getting your equipment ready, zipping up, you know, maybe having second thoughts about going up, then, you know, that's cool, but why don't we just start immediately on the mountain and you're climbing already, and maybe you're having second thoughts already up there. You're having second thoughts about what you're doing, you're freaking out a little bit, your partner's trying to coach you through it and help you. Maybe they get scared too based on you getting scared, and suddenly it becomes a little bit more dynamic and we got to this big moment right off the bat. Right in the middle is where we start with this activity. And ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this episode of Mutt Tips. Those are just a few quick ways to jumpstart a scene and get into it right off the bat. There's many other ways to do it. So again, if you like the video, give it a like down below. If you have questions or want clarification on something, comment down below. I'd be happy to maybe address it in a comment or maybe in a future video if I want to elaborate a little more. If you're on YouTube, subscribe. Do all that fun stuff. It really helps. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a special one because it is now episode number 